Greetings everyone! Today's video is actually a special request from one of my subscribers. They asked if I could do a quick overview on mating worm drives as part of my SolidWorks mate series. If you have any special requests for tutorials, feel free to leave a comment below with your request. Also, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to get notifications about future tutorials on the Crochuk Industries YouTube channel. A worm drive is a special type of gear configuration where a threaded screw, called a worm screw, mates with a helical gear called a worm gear. Worm drives are typically used to reduce rotational speeds or transmit higher torques. They can also serve as a locking mechanism for a mechanical system. The system cannot move unless the worm screw is rotating. So, once the input force on a worm screw was removed, the system would automatically lock. Here we have an example of a worm drive assembly. I've created a simple sheet metal bracket to hold the two gears in place, added a little crank, and added an output shaft. Now to mate these parts, we actually use the gear mate that we've used in previous videos. But we go to our mates icon and expand out the mechanical mates tab and select gear. Now for our mating sh uh, shafts, we're just going to pick this boss for the main gear and we can't really get to the center hole for the worm so we're just going to pick the shaft for the crank because there's a locked con uh, concentric mate between the two parts and, hit, and now we have to specify our gear ratio now in previous videos with the gear mate we've always used the gear pitch diameter for the ratio, but in this scenario we need to capture the speed ratio for the two parts. The speed ratio is calculated by dividing the number of teeth in the gear by the number of threads in the worm. We know that the gear has 30 teeth, and we know that the worm only has one thread, so for this instance the gear ratio would be 30 to 1. So we will enter in a value of 30 for the gear and a value of 1 for the worm and hit the green checkbox all right let's see how we did we'll try spinning the crank and look now as we spin the crank the worm gear moves or the gear moves with the worm choppy at this angle with the motion from my mouse, but it's a little clearer here. There we go. Okay, let's try putting this worm gear sub-assembly into our larger gear assembly that we've used in the other tutorials. So here we have our gear assembly that we've used for our rack and pinion and gear mate tutorials. Link, link above if you want to watch those or down in the description. Now we want to add in our worm gear sub-assembly. So we'll go, to insert, we'll go to insert components on the command manager, select insert components. And since we have the worm drive open, we can just click on it and click anywhere in the assembly to plop it in. Now when we made this sub-assembly in, we want to have a locked concentric sh uh, mate between the output shaft here and the ID of this gear. So we will set that up. Mates concentric 
and we're going to hit lock rotation and hit the green check and we want this face here to be coincident to that uh, the back plate of the or the back face of the wall hit the green checkbox and last but not least we want to make this end face for the bracket uh, coincident with the side this little edge of the wall here or make it parallel rather not coincident parallel and hit the green checkbox right. oh. something went wrong looks like our shaft is not properly aligned with our gear so what we're going to do is just hit the green checkbox and we're going to rebuild the assembly to rebuild the assembly you simply hit control Q and it looks like it fixed the error yeah, hitting control Q is a forced rebuild and it will fix easily 80% of the issues you have in SolidWorks that's your free tech tip for the day alright now, in theory, if we start rotating this crank, the worm drive should drive all the other gears. So let's see what happens. Oh, it's saying the, comp the selected component is fully defined and cannot be moved. This is because the worm drive subassembly is actually rigid. By default, when you insert subassemblies into a larger assembly. They are rigid, meaning that they can only be moved as one single entity, and the individual components in the subassembly cannot be moved. We want to set the worm drive assembly to flexible, so we're going to right click and select this icon here for make subassembly flexible. Alright, now as we try and spin the hand crank, we see that all the other gears spin with it. Alright. This has been a quick tutorial on the worm drive uh, mechanism in SolidWorks and how to properly made it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to get notifications about future videos. And again, if there are any tutorials that you would like me to go over, please feel free to leave a comment below with your request. Thank you and have a great day.